because CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Give a man a pipe he can smoke. Give a man a book he can read. And his home is bright with a calm delight, though the room be poor indeed. That was a fine poetic sentiment when it was first written about a uh, hundred years ago, but it may not have stood the test of time. For one thing, Smoking has fallen into disfavor. And not too many books written today are designed to brighten and delight. These are grim times, my friends. And don't just take my word for it. Read some of the recent books, especially the one we're about to consider. With this book, we can do justice. With this book, we can get rich. Do you know what this book can mean to the world? I want only what it can mean to you and me. But I don't want money. This isn't just money. This is millions. Millions. Justice is more important. Captain, if you can't see it, well, only one of us is going to walk out of here with the book. mystery drama, The Book of Abaca, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Alan Swift. It is sponsored in part by x lax and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What is the most valuable book in the world? The original Gutenberg Bible? A first folio Shakespeare? The answer is no. To them. Or to any other famous first editions you could think of. There is a book, and it was written by a man most people never even heard of, that can be worth millions. The Book of Abaca. The Abaca was a 20,000-ton tanker that flew the Silanian flag. On June 3rd at 2300 hours, or 11 o'clock p.m., she was approximately 100 miles east of Cape May, New Jersey. Her captain was on the bridge when he heard a frantic voice from the engine room. Captain Bowen. Captain! What is it, engineer? We're sinking. Sinking? The water's rushing into the engine room. Man the pumps. The plates have sprung. I said man the pumps. What pumps? I switched them on and the motor's blew. We're sinking. I can't stop the water. We we can't sink. We've got three million gallons of oil on board. I'm hip deep in water now. You know what that means? I only know we're sinking. I'm coming below. What for? You want to drown down here? Every plate in the hull's beginning to buckle. This tub is gone. Do you know what this oil spill will do to the east coast of America? Captain, don't you realize it's over? God, I never lost a ship in my entire career. Captain, can't you understand? This one is gone. We'll be lucky to get out of her alive. All hands, all hands, prepare to abandon ship. What are you doing in the cabin? Captain, uh, are you all right? No. I'm not all right. The, the crew is away. That's good. But come on, Captain. Where? Well, there's a life raft left for you and me. Let's go. We don't have five minutes. You go ahead, Karn. What do you mean I should go ahead? Just what I said. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going to do what I think you're going to do. I am... I'll go down with my ship. Oh, no. Oh, that's for books, for movies. I cannot leave this ship with a good conscience. Okay, can't we argue later? Three million gallons of crude oil. You know what this will do to the coastline, to the fish, to the birds? 
It'll destroy the livelihood of thousands, the enjoyment of millions. How can I face people? But it isn't your fault. Yes, it is my fault. I should never have sailed on the Abaca. I knew she was unseaworthy. But I let myself be convinced. I, I still say it isn't your fault. Vanity, my vanity. I'm old, I'm too old to command a ship. Why didn't I accept it gratefully? Captain, before it's too late. But they flattered me. They said, Captain Bauer, you're the best there is. Take the Abaca. Vanity. I was so happy for a command, a ship. Didn't I know she was little more than a heap of scrap metal? Well, everybody knows that. Everybody does not know that. This phony flag, this two-bit monarchy of Salania. It's all a dodge to register rotten ships and crooked corporations. Captain, there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, you're wrong. There's plenty we can do about it. But I cannot do it if I drown here like a rat in this death trap. Hell, good. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Let us leave. My waterproof bag, and I'll need... Captain, there's no time to look around. The book. The book. It will destroy them. The book of the Abaca. The log book of the Abaca. <laughs> All right, Captain. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, the seas aren't too bad. We we can stay afloat on this raft. We're bound to be picked up as soon as it gets light. God, listen to me. Hey, sure, Captain. In, in this book. In, in this book. Captain, is something wrong? God. I'm dying. Well, what's the matter? I don't know. I'm dying. Please, wrap, wrap yourself in this blanket. No, no help. Hold on, Captain. In a couple of hours, we we're bound to be picked up. Come on. Now, listen. Don't, 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 don't say anything. Just listen. The Terry Corporation. Yeah. The Terry Corporation, yeah. You know, okay, they, they own the back. Yes, and 25 or 50 or who knows how many other rotten on seaworthy clubs. Right, don't get yourself excited. The Terry Corporation. Bartholomew Terry. Now, Captain, uh, you're just getting excited for nothing. No, no, no. It's for something. Bartholomew Terry buys these unseaworthy hulks, and he... Captain, just uh, take it easy, please. No, no, I don't have time. The Abaca should have been scrapped 20 years ago. But how a mutare will go down with the Abaca. This book, my love book, will drown him. It will prove that he was negligent. That we were unfit to sail. But I'm going to die. But don't say that. I am going to die of shame. You take this book and turn it over to the United States Coast Guard. You do that. Promise me. Promise? Uh, yeah, uh, Captain, I... I promise. Yes? Oh, yes. Have him come in. Oh, Mr. Kahn. Have a chair. Oh, thank you. Cigar? Thank you again. You were chief engineer on my Abaca. I... I don't believe we ever met before. Uh, but uh, we're meeting now. Mm. Too bad about the Abaca. Yeah. Fine, trim ship. Was she? Well, wasn't she? She was a rusty old tub that could hardly keep afloat. How can you say that? She was given a most 
searching inspection by the authorities before she was permitted to leave port. By the Salanian authorities, no doubt? Of course. And unless she has met the standards of the Salanian Maritime Commission... <laughs> Which is a joke all over the world. She would not be permitted to leave the harbor. The only time one of your ships flying a Selenian flag is prevented from leaving a Selenian harbor is when you have failed to bribe the proper, or should I say improper authorities. Now, see here, Mr. Kahn. Which hardly ever happens. Uh, Mr. Kahn, what is the purpose of this visit? The Tarrier Lines. All those ships that fly the big red T under the Selenian flag, of course I should say alleged ships, because the Tarrier Line is little more than a floating scrap heap. A temporary floating heap. Mr. Kahn, I am a busy man, I know. But I am empowered to arrange matters for you to become a gentleman of leisure. I can retire you from business a hopeless bankrupt. I must ask you to come to the point. What was I doing on the back end? I'm a good engineer, but I'm a drunk. The Tarrier Line is the only one who take me as a chief. Well, I must say you display remarkable gratitude. And Bowers. Who else wanted a captain his age? But we're okay for Tarrier. Why? Because the price is right. Well, I fail to understand your complaint. Your ship, the Abaca, is down on the bottom. A hundred miles out. And there's a mammoth oil spill three million gallons thick headed this way. Mm, an unfortunate circumstance of our technological age. And you sit there fat and happy, convinced you'll even make a buck on this. This tragedy. You actually think you're going to collect insurance for ship and cargo. I know I'm going to collect. Now the insurance company can prove negligence. What negligence? My poor man, you're evidently suffering from your ordeal. Negligence cannot be proved. The equipment failed. Really? All of it. Obsolete. Faulty. And who will testify to that? I'll testify. To what? You're drunk. You're unfit. Huh? Then why did you hire me? You concealed that condition from us. I admit. We would have a problem if the captain had survived. Then uh, you do have a problem. Because he did. He what? He survived. He's dead. He was dead when the Coast Guard picked you up. I know. But his testimony survived. His book. The log. The log book of the Abaca. The log book? I have made a photocopy of several entries. Uh, chosen here and there at random. Uh, fascinating reading for a board of inquiry. Uh, can't look through them? Uh, let me read this. I was afraid of the worn engine cylinder. I begged Tarrier to have it repaired. Tarrier replied it would last the trip. It had been causing heavy vibration. I think we may spring some of the plates... Radioed the office for permission to put in the Tangiers for repairs. Was told to proceed to New York. I will not be responsible for the results of this action. <laughs> this is not the juiciest either. It goes on and on, gets worse and worse. You have, I assume, the log of the Abaca? Oh, yes. This is my property. Of course. I could have you arrested. Well, why don't you do that? I will then turn the book over to the American authorities, and uh, I'm sure they'll be eager to look through it under the circumstances. Well, isn't that your intention in any event to turn the book over to the authorities? It was Captain Bauer's intention. He was a very old man with a very guilty conscience. He was out to sink the tarry line. And what is your intention? What do you want? What do I want? A life I always dreamed of. A life of ease and grace. 
A life completely secure from storms. Is such a life possible? Uh, enough money makes anything possible. Mm. And how much is enough? Two million dollars. Two million. Two million. The log book of the Abaca. Well, that's a rather expensive book. Yeah, true. But think of how much more expensive it would be if it were ever published. Two million dollars for an unpublished manuscript. Even in these overinflated times, that's an extremely substantial sum. Two million. And it doesn't even have any sex in it. Mr. Terrier looks across his desk at Mr. Carn. What do you suppose his answer will be? Don't guess. Just wait for Act Two. Are the wild waves saying, asks the poet. In our story, we have seen an oil tanker go down off the Jersey coast. And it's not so much what the wild waves are saying, but what they are doing, which is burying a thick, fish-killing oil slick closer and ever closer to shore, where it will have a most depressing effect on the economy and the environment. Two million dollars. A not unreasonable sum, Mr. Terrier. Damages, claims, and fines could go at least fifty million. Two million is what? Four <laughs> percent? No, Mr. Terrier, you are getting a bargain. Actually, the buy of the century. The log is in your possession? Yeah. It is immediately available? Ready to change hands at an hour's notice. Well, you realize, of course, I do not have two million dollars in my pocket. Ah, uh, where may I reach you? Uh, well, we can't do it that way. I'll be in touch with you. How much time do you require? A day. Fine. I'll, uh, call you this time tomorrow. Ah. Uh. Uh, Cosma is rolling about. Good. A man named Khan has just left my office. He's six feet tall, thin, red hair. He should be headed for the elevators. Rollins to follow him, find out where he lives. Yeah, that's right. I'll have other instructions for you later. Yes? Uh, you got a Mr. Khan living here? Khan? No, I don't believe I rented a room to anyone named Khan. Ernest L. Khan. No, I don't have a rumor by that name. Um, let me ask you that again. A fellow six feet tall, thin, red hair. Oh, um... You're going to ask me who I am, huh? What do I want him, huh? Well, yes. Yeah, well, I'm used to uh, questions like that. I'm from the FBI. Oh. And we have to talk to this man. Oh, well, of course. This FBI, that's different. Well, uh, he answers that description. His his name is Edwards. Edwards, huh? That's very significant. Arthur K. Edwards. <laughs> that's got to be a phony. Oh, I knew there was something suspicious about that one. The minute I laid eyes on him. Did you? Oh, yes. You don't fool Edna Miller. I'm an excellent judge of character. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, now i got to see this fella. Uh, you better stay here. Oh, you mean he's... He's dangerous? Nah, nothing like that. He just told me what room he's in. Oh, uh, well, number six. It's it's up the stairs and first door on your right. Upstairs, all right. First door on the right. Uh, you'll see the number six on it. It's, it's a very nice room, really. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, you better keep out of sight, huh? Oh, oh I will. I will. <laughs> Hi there, Mr. Khan. Uh, who are you? Well, I got something to show you. What? This. 
This is a forty-five caliber automatic pistol. Now, uh, let's close the door. I... What do you want? Well, I'll tell you how it is. I'm an agent for a book collector. Oh, I see. Well, now that you see, we can save a lot of time. You hand over the book, and you're entitled to something for your trouble. My client's really a very big-hearted guy. He told me to give you a thousand bucks. Oh, that's uh, very generous. Sure, considering he don't have to give you nothing at all. And uh, if I refuse? <laughs> Come on, chump. This thing's too big for you. You knew how to handle yourself. You'd never get into a spot like this to begin with, so hand it over. But you don't think I keep it in the room, do you? I don't know. You're an amateur. Who could be dumb enough to do anything? Okay, so it's not here. Let's go get it, huh? And suppose I refuse. I can make a phone call. And in five minutes, I could get a guy up here. And before you know it, you'd be begging him to listen. Yeah, well, you, you can't threaten me. I've got the aces. Only I know where the book is. That proves how stupid you are. My client don't need the book. All he has to do is to make sure it never gets seen. If you had any brains, you'd have said, if anything ever happens to me, I'd arrange to have that book delivered uh, to so-and-so. <laughs> but you're an amateur. Come on, come on. Get out of it while you're still alive. Well, what do you say? Well, listen, mister. Only a professional can make a killing. An amateur can only get killed. There. Yeah, thousand bucks, and you're out of it. Okay. You win. Hand it over. <laughs> now you talk. What the... Drop it. Drop it. Or I'll break your arm. Let go. Let go. I'll kill you. Yeah, you asked for it. You asked for it. Oh, I heard a shot. Uh, out of my way. Help! Police! Margo! Oh, help! Help! Oh, police! Catch him! Catch him! Hey, you there! Help! Police officer! Hello there, Porky. Well, if it ain't Lieutenant Foster. Uh, how do you feel, Porky? Well, I wouldn't want to go dancing tonight, copper. Well, the doctor tells me you'll be okay. So, what do you want to talk about? Who was he, Porky? Who was who? The dead man. What dead man? Oh, the one you killed. Did I kill somebody? I ain't want to play that game, hmm? The name of that game, copper, is democracy. I didn't kill nobody unless, and until, a jury of my peers says so. Porky, we've got you nailed. You were running from a house with a smoking pistol. Your bullet killed him. The jury won't even have to leave the box. <laughs> we could make a deal. A deal? Who bought you, Porky? And why? Hey, that's what you want to know. What do you give me? I can't promise anything. No? Well, I'll do it my way. I'll keep my mouth shut and trust my connections. Nothing helps when it's murder one. Yeah, yeah. Well, copper, you and me, we're small potatoes. We're just an extension of big haunches. You see what I mean? Now, my haunches knows how to put the heat on your haunches. You'll need a miracle to beat this one. See, that's just what my haunches are. They're in the miracle business. Hello, Lieutenant Foster. I'm Patrolman Leone. Oh, you're the cop who collared Porky Adams. Yes, sir. Well, that was a good job. What are you doing here? Well, the old dame, uh, Mrs. Miller, owns the rooming house. Is she okay? Well, the doc says she's still in some kind of shock. Precinct assigned me to keep an eye on the place. Well, I came here to talk to her. 
Mrs. Miller? Oh, who are you? I'm a police officer. Look, if you're a policeman, why aren't you wearing a uniform? Well, I'm a detective. I don't believe you. Uh, Officer Leone, will you tell Mrs. Miller who I am? Yeah. He's a detective, Miss Miller. Oh, are you sure? Mrs. Miller, would I lie? Well, no. Well, it's all right for you to answer his questions. Oh. Now, the man who was shot. I don't want to think about it. What was his name? I don't remember. Miss Miller, the man who was shot in room number six, don't you have a rent book where you keep records? Is this the book on the table? Uh, hand it to me, Leon. That, yeah. That's my book. You have no right to look at that. Of course. Uh, you look in the book and tell me who was number six. Well, I, I don't have my glasses. Uh, Officer Leone, yeah, will you? Yeah, yeah, sure thing, Miss Miller. All right. Uh, room number six. Here it is. Mr. Arthur K. Edwards. That's the last entry. Then his name was Edwards? <laughs> If it says so in the book. All right, now, the killer. How did the killer get into the house? Well, he he rang the bell. And? He said he was from the FBI, and he asked for Mr. Edwards. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? He rang the bell, and he asked for Mr. Edwards. Is that what happened? No, no, Officer Leone, that's not what happened. But you just said... He didn't ask for Mr. Edwards. He... He asked for someone else. Someone else? Who? Uh, think. I, I can't think. I'm, I'm scared out of my wits. I was there when a human being was, was murdered. Uh, who uh, did the killer ask for? I don't know. I, I don't want to know. Wh wh what was the name the killer asked for? Did I, I can't remember. Well, uh, I know it's hard, but try, eh? Promise me you'll try. <laughs> Yes, Officer Leone. All right, the name. I mean, uh, did it sound Italian, like mine, uh, or, or maybe German, or Irish, or Polish? Was the name like yours? Miller? Or Foster? I tell you, I can't remember. Yeah. It's all right, Miss Miller. I, I know you're trying so hard. Honest. I, I'm doing my best. Sure, yeah. Honest. Honest, but, but that's his name. His name is Honest? Yes. No, 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 it's, it's Ernest. That's right. The, the killer, he, he rang the bell and he asked, did I rent a room to a Mr. Ernest L. Kahn? That's who he asked for, Ernest L. Kahn. Well, what's in a name? Everything or nothing. It depends on whose name it is. For instance... Ernest L. Karn is, as we know, the name of the missing chief engineer of the wrecked tanker, Abaka. But where will knowledge of that name take Lieutenant Foster? It will take us into Act Three, which I shall present shortly. Not that we wish to seem profound. Any story, every story that deals with human beings is basically a story about mankind. We happen to be the order that stands on top of the animal kingdom. The reason for that is we are smarter than the beasts below us. And that's the problem. We are so smart, we tend to outsmart ourselves. We and the beasts share the same environment. But everything the other animals do enhances the natural environment. After all, did you ever hear of a fish that caused an oil spill? That's who he asked for, Ernest L. Kahn. Ernest L. Kahn. Lieutenant, why is that name familiar? Ernest L. Kahn. It's not some hood. No, I, but I remember hearing that name. Oh, Kahn. Oh, I know. You do? I, I heard it on the news, and I, I read it in the papers. Who is he, Mrs. Miller? He was rescued from that ship. Karn, that's right. That's right, Leone. He was on that tanker. Oh, yeah, right, Lieutenant. The one that went down with all that oil. Yeah. Karn was the chief engineer. The one that's missing. Lieutenant, a top professional like Porky Adams, what would he want to knock off Karn? Well, Karn was the target. 
Corky asked for him by name. Wasn't mistaken identity. Why? Why did anyone want to knock off Khan? Yes, Lieutenant. What may I do for you? Well, Mr. Terrier, would you be good enough to identify this picture? Well, if I can. Well, uh, I've never seen such a serene face. Yeah, he should be. He's dead. Oh, of course. I know this man. I should say I knew him. It's Khan. He was chief engineer on the Abaka. Why is he dead? Someone shot him. Oh, my goodness. Why? Well, that's what we're trying to determine. Do they... Have they got the killer? Yes. And that's what has us in the dark. Why do you say that, Lieutenant? Well, the killer is a professional. Yes? He only kills on assignment. I... I don't follow you. He kills because he's hired. Who would hire him to kill Mr. Carn? And why? Well, I'm afraid I can't answer either question, Lieutenant. How well did you know Carn? Well, he applied for a position as chief engineer. Did you interview him personally? He was extremely qualified. Mm. I hired him. But may I ask you this? Your, your line has a reputation for low pay and hard work. Who says that? Well, I do some checking. If Khan was extremely qualified, why did he take a job with you? Well, A, because jobs are scarce. B, no one else would hire him. C, because he was a drunk. And D, uh, may I suggest a reason why he was killed? I'd appreciate it. It's possible that Khan... May have been bringing drugs into the country, isn't it? Well, it's... Now, drugs, as I understand it, are controlled by the syndicate, an organization. Is that true? It, it would appear to be. Hmm. Karn probably got himself in trouble with the syndicate. And for that reason, he was killed. That would account for a professional assassin, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, then... That could be your case, couldn't it? It, uh, it could. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Terry. I hope I've been helpful. Well, I'm sure you have. Uh, Lieutenant Foster, could I talk to you for a few minutes? Uh, sure, Leon. Where are you on the con murder? Uh, nowhere. Uh, <clears throat> look, I've been doing some thinking, and I, uh... Do you want to hear this? No, okay. Well, this oil tanker, the Abaca, now, it goes down. You know the kind of damage it's going to create. Mm -hmm. Now, the company that owns the boat is known as um, Hasla Bak Outfit, right? Yeah. Maybe it's their fault, she's saying. If it is, you know what they can be hit for? So? Well, who can prove it's their fault? The two best people for that are gone. The captain dies at sea, and the chief engineer is uh, assassinated. The Terrier Company is motive. Leone, that's one of those excellent theories. Looks good, sounds great. <laughs> the problem is there's no proof. On the other hand... Yes, Lieutenant? It could be good enough to scare Porky out of us. Hey, Lieutenant. Nice of you to come to visit a sick friend. You're through, Porky. You're in this all by yourself. Ah, come on, Foster. You and me, we've been around long enough. Who was this guy they bought you to knock off? I don't know what you're talking about. His name was Khan. Ernest L. Khan, wasn't it? Well, this is your story, Lieutenant. You know who he was? No. Who was he? Chief engineer of that oil tanker that went down... Well, looks like he was unlucky all the way around, don't it? So you see, the connections are off. The fix is out. Oh, rave on, Foster, rave on. I'll tell you what the DA's got. Khan was ordered killed because he could prove that the tanker sank through company negligence. 
That's why a professional killer, Porky Adams, was employed. The way the public is up in arms about it. You think there can be a fix? All I gotta do is keep my mouth shut. And nobody's got nothing. Untrue. We've got you for murder. Murder one. And the death penalty is back in style. Well, Porky? Now? Or later? Well, uh, say, for the sake of argument. Yeah? What kind of a deal could I make? I can't promise anything, Porky. Sure, sure, you have to say that. And what I'm going to say is just conversation. You see what I mean? Yeah? You can never prove I said it. Uh, this terrier guy, he says to me, Khan has a book. We need it. Here's his address. Go get it. Scare him. Promise him a thousand bucks for it. But if you have to, knock him off. What kind of a book is it, I ask? Khan will know what you're talking about, Terrier says. So I go there, ready to deal one way or the other. When the chump tries to tangle with me, well, the rest you know. And you'll give that to the D.A.? In writing. Now, the D.A. has to sit down with my mouthpiece and work out the deal. <laughs> Officer Leone. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, I thought I'd come by and tell you your days of walking a beat may be numbered. Oh, I like being on the street. You might like being a detective better. When I wrote up the report, I said it was your lead. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Lieutenant. You know, Leone, I've been a cop 20 years, and this is the biggest thing I've ever had. It involves millions of people. It has to do with the whole country. Not everybody has a chance to do something like this. Something important. Yeah, that, that's how I feel, too. I want this guy, Terrier, to be bagged. I never felt this personal about anything in my life. Hi there, Mr. Adams, is it? That's me, uh, Porky Adams. Who are you? I'm the new resident doctor. You must be an important man. I see there's a policeman at the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm getting more important every day. And I should be honored that I've been chosen to give you a shot. A shot? What am I getting a shot for? Well, according to the chart, it's an antibiotic. You still have some traces of the infection from that gunshot wound. The surgeon wants it cleaned up. Ooh, will it hurt? Oh, come on, roll over. You won't feel a thing. <laughs> Lieutenant Foster. Yes, sir. Who? He, he what? What do you mean, Porky Adams is dead? But at the hospital? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I know. Right. Lieutenant Foster, what may I do for you? It's not what... You can do for me, Mr. Terrier. It's what you've done to me. Really? What have I done? Well, you, just to make a fast buck, you're willing to destroy the whole world. I don't follow you. You had Porky Adams kill Ernest Kahn. You can't prove that. <laughs> Notice your instinctive reaction. You don't deny it. You simply say, I can't prove it. And you can't. When you found out Porky was willing to talk, you arranged to have him murdered at the hospital. You can't prove that either. You hired a killer who poses a doctor and... You can't prove any of it. You hired Porky to get a book from Khan. The only book it could be is the log book of the Avaka. None of this is provable. Which means the book exists. And I came here to tell you one thing. I'll find that book. There is such a thing as justice. You won't be allowed to get away with it. Well, Lieutenant, we turned the place upside down. There's nothing to be found. Where could he have hidden the book? He had to have it handy. Well, there's nowhere in this room. But where could it be? Now, look. Look what you did to the room. We'll see that it's put together again, Mrs. Miller. Uh, Mrs. Miller, where could Khan have 
hidden something. Well, you looked, didn't you? I don't know. A book. It would have to be a pretty good size. Well, it's it, it, it's it's not in this room. He stashed it someplace. We'll never know. That's how Terry wins. He doesn't need the book. He just has to make sure it's never found. Oh, he mustn't win. We have to stop him. But there's nothing here, Lieutenant. Oh, you're right. Okay, Mrs. Miller. I'm sorry we troubled you. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye, Miss Miller. Yeah. Bye. Is, is uh, something wrong, Mrs. Miller? No, no, nothing. Nothing at all. You sure? Yeah, sure, I'm sure. Now, look, if, if, if something's wrong, you know, you can tell me I'm your friend. Cop on the beat, Officer Leone. Well, uh, look, I, I was terrified I'd have to testify against, against that killer, but he died mysteriously in the hospital, so nobody would need me for anything, so I'm out of it, right? Absolutely. Which is where I want to be, out of it. But, but I'm afraid I'm in it again. How? Uh, a letter. It came a few days ago for Mr. Arthur K. Edwards. You know, the name Mr. Kahn used when he was here. You'd better let us see that letter. Uh, I'm in it again. I'm in it again. The letter, please. Uh, I wanted to destroy it, but I was afraid. It's a criminal offense to do that to the U.S. mail. So whatever I do, I... Oh, I, I'm so scared. Where is the letter? In my bag. Here. Yeah. It's from the National Bank. Miss Jones, I have a court order here to open the safety deposit box in the name of Arthur K. Edwards. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. I, I remember Mr. Edwards. He, he rented this box just about a week ago. Is he in trouble? Uh, he's dead. Oh. You say he just signed up for this box a week ago? Yes, yeah, see? See, here it is, on the card. Hmm. This notice sent to his address says he owes a year's rental. Oh. Well, you know why that was sent out? Hmm. It was a mistake <laughs> on the part of the computer. Mistake? Yeah, 8787. This is the one. Yes, the computer is always fouling up on the billing. A lot of customers get mad. Oh, oh this is a big box. What did what he keep in there, I wonder? What? It's a book. A leather-bound book. Well, what does it say? You know what it says. The book of Abaca. And how it was found. The way many things are found. By mistake, the computer made a mistake. Or the fingers that punched the computer made a mistake. It happens every day. So many good things and bad are the result of mistakes. But there is a peculiar significance and irony to the fact that the book of Abaca should be found through a computer mistake. And I'll tell you why in a few moments. Abaca. Abaca comes from a Greek word, abax, which means just what you think it means. Abacus, which was the first primitive computer. The Greek word abax comes from the Hebrew word abak, which means dust. Because when you wanted to add in those paperless days, you scratched the figures on the ground. So, from dust on the ground to strings in a box, to fantastic electronic circuits. The Abak becomes the computer of today. Therefore, it is altogether fitting that somehow a mistake of a computer reveals the story of the Abaka. Our cast included Alan Swift, Robert Dryden, Court Benson, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and x -Lax. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.